So, if this is your first time on this channel, this is Hyperdrive Pictures. Normally, every Wednesday, we release a new video. The video I'm referencing in this tutorial is from the Slender video. You should definitely check it out on our channel, youtube.com slash hyperdrivepix, which you are probably already on. But the reason I say you should check it out is because, like I said, this footage was shot entirely during the day. And then at uh, in post-production, we changed it to look like it was a shot at night. And you can actually see kind of an entire before and after of what the video looked like. So if you go to our main channel page and scroll down to the beginning of our videos, we have Slenders looking for you, which looks like it's shot at night. And then Slenders looking for you original sound and color. So that's what it looked like when we actually shot it. So you can actually do a little bit of a comparison to see how we got from point A to point B. And this tutorial will show you how to do that. So the reason we're releasing this tutorial instead of a new video is because it's Thanksgiving. Everybody's home. And even though we just started, I'm personally very thankful for all the views that we've gotten. So I wanted to give back a little bit with this tutorial because a lot of people have been asking me how to do it. So with all that said, let's get started. I'm here in Final Cut. I've got my footage right here. This is the raw footage from Slender, some of the raw footage. And as you can see, it was definitely shot during the day. So let's change this to nighttime. It's actually much easier to do than you think in Final Cut. To get started, go into here and pick a color under matte. We're going to generate a color matte. Or actually, it's really more of a color solid. Pick a blue color, a, a bright blue color. I know it's kind of cliche, but nighttime shots look blue. In fact, when I was uh, doing the color correction for this, I was looking outside. Uh, it was around 5 a.m., so the sun was just coming up, and it indeed looked blue. So that's a really quick way to cheat it. So you've got this blue solid on top of your footage. Just drag it over, trim it on top of all of your footage. Click on it, go to composite mode, and hit multiply. So right away it looks darker, and it's a little hard to see, but then you're going to mess with some of these controls. So you're going to go to motion, and you're going to mess with the opacity. And you'll notice the closer to zero it gets, the more daytime it appears, the closer to 100%, the more nighttime it appears. You might not want to do 100%, because that is kind of overpowering, and you won't have much color at all. Uh, maybe drag it. I, I found a good medium around 75 to 80 percent. So let's. Uh, this looks like 80 percent is good. One thing that's going to help you out is to go into the color correction view, and these waveforms will help you read your footage. So basically, these two will tell you how bright something is, and this will tell you how much of a color there is, red, green, or blue. And this will tell you where your color kind of shifts towards, which is right now towards blue. So as I take the opacity back down to zero, the color is kind of right in the middle. We've got a lot brighter. And once I shift it over to 80%, it gets much darker. And it also gets much bluer. So even though we do want it to look like nighttime, we don't want it to look so dark that our audience can't see what's going on and right now it's really hard for me to see what's going on so I'm gonna I'm gonna do 70 percent let's do 70 percent you know what 65 now that's a pretty good brightness but these green bushes are actually kind of getting in the way it's very distracting so we're gonna do a tint and we're going to do a tint anyways because whenever you do do a day to night conversion, not only do you want to make it look darker, which we accomplished by using this blue color set to multiply. Multiply is a compositing mode. Um, when it gets darker, you also get less color because less light means less reflections off of color, if you know anything about light. So we're going to go into color corrector, go to saturation, and just move it down. Another way to do this, and my preferred way of doing this if you're just going to do a tint effect, is go to image control tint. And it's going to automatically make it 100%. We don't want there to be no color. So we're going to bring the tint back maybe maybe to 80, 85%. No, a little bit more. So you can see a little bit of green 
sticking back in there, which is good. We want that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to copy this tint to every other clip in your timeline. In our case, it is just one other clip. So what you're going to do is select the clip with a effect on it, hit copy, then select every other clip, or in this case, our one other clip. And instead of hitting paste, you're going to hit paste attributes, and you're going to paste filters. And now this looks like it was shot at nighttime. So pretty easy. That's basically how I did it. Now, not every shot had the same 70% tint and, what was it, 80% or 65% color multiply on top of it. Some shots, because of what was in the background, needed more of uh, the color, less of the tint, vice versa. So you're going to have to eyeball it, and that's where these come in handy. So these will tell you if there's like a huge red spike that's going to get distracting. Like, you know, there's a big red car in the back of your shot. You're going to need to tint it down to bring it down to something that looks uniform with everything else. So that's the basic concept. Now, really quick, I'm going to show you how to do something in After Effects. Even though I said this was for Final Cut, if you're watching this, maybe you want to see how to do this in After Effects. I'm trying to get to everybody here. But I'm going to show you how to fix a bright sky in After Effects. Because when you're shooting these, you don't want to have bright skies. You want to have no skies, just like in these two shots. So this is just our actress Sasha against a row of bushes and this is just a wider shot of bushes and then we have a large hill in the background so it's really just earth that you're seeing a couple of the shots actually we shot got the sky we tried our best not to get the sky but piece of advice if you want to do the best kind of data net conversion don't show anything bright like the sky like in this shot see now that gives it away that it's daytime and even if you do all of the data net conversion stuff it's still not going to look right because that sky is just pretty bright. That one's not too bright, but it's pretty pretty bright. It's giving it away just a little bit. When we shot this, we were very sure not to let anything hit 100%, including the sky in this shot. It's still a little overpowering, but the good thing about that is the sky didn't hit 100%. 100% would be on this video scope here right there. So whenever you hit that, you can't bring that down. Everything else you can bring down beneath that. So, you know, this we we're able to bring down all of this information here in the bushes we we're able to bring down. But when something's at 100% and you bring it down, it just, instead of keeping all the detail, just comes down as clipped out gray as you bring it down. It just, just looks bad. But we can actually make this look a little bit more convincing in After Effects. So we're going to switch over to After Effects. I've already got this shot queued up. I'm making you composition actually going to really quickly change it to 32 bits per channel linear working space with this color space linear just so that we have more color information I'm going to change the resolution to full so what we're going to do is something a little complicated depending on how much After Effects you've done we're going to make a mat of the sky that will specifically make the sky darker but keep all the rest of the footage the same luminosity so basically we're going to kind of bring the sky down a little bit to match so that way it doesn't look as overpoweringly bright. So I'm going to duplicate the sky. Going to go to color correction, tint. Then I'm going to go to color correction, curve. So basically what we're trying to do right now is make the sky completely white and everything else completely black. So almost. That pretty much does it. Then we'll um, make a fast blur just because when you're doing mats, It'll help smooth things out a bit. Repeat edge pixels. Let's do two. Two pixels. All right. Now what we're going to do is make an adjustment layer. So let's uh, let's get rid of this map right here. We're just going to get rid of it. So we're going to take our adjustment layer. Go to... You could do this with exposure. You could do this with levels. You could do this with curves. Today I'm going to do this with curves. We're going to bring down the sky. So you'll see it's getting a little grayer but since it's not completely blown out we still have some blue color information here that we can use. You want to see how far down you can bring it. Let's bring it uh, right about there. Now you're noticing that it's making Sasha and the bushes on the ground darker too. We don't want that but this is where the mat comes in. We're gonna make a Luma mat to tell 
the adjustment layer to affect only the white part of the layer. Everything that's underneath this white part is going to get darker. So it's very easy. You just put your skyline on top. Then you go to your track mat and hit luma mat. So you see as I turn the adjustment layer on and off, the sky gets darker, but the foreground stays the same. And you can see what's too much. So I think I've adjusted this too much. There's only so much you can do. So let's bring it up to there. It's a little bit more reasonable. And then what you would do from here, you would, you know, add this to your render queue, go down, render it out, import it into Final Cut, and then you could put it underneath your color mat and add the same tint and just put it as part of your sequence. So if you need to make any adjustments to the tint and color, you can do that there. Or if you wanted to in After Effects, some people prefer to do it this way. It depends on how in depth you want to get with each shot. You can just finish the color correction in After Effects, which is again super easy. You just basically do the same thing that you did in Final Cut. You make a blue solid, set it to multiply. What was our opacity? 65%. Make an adjustment layer. This one doesn't have Luma Mat, it's just a plain old adjustment layer. And then tint it to what was it? 80, 85%. And our blue solid's a little purple. That's a little better. And it's not the best, but you want to avoid skylines. But hey, in case you get skylines, this is a way to make it look a little bit better. Just a little bit. We went from that to this, so it's not as distracting, but yeah. So the reason I showed you this was because I did the most of the color correction in Final Cut because I knew if I was going back and forth between After Effects, that would make the workflow take a lot longer. And the multiply and tint effect is easily done in Final Cut, so I don't need After Effects for that job, especially since most of the shots are like this, where there's no sky to worry about, and we set our camera to warn us if anything was peaking at 100%, so there's no 100% peaks in there at all, so that's why I didn't find a cut. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you're able to use this method. If you want to learn more about data night conversions, you can actually, you can actually go to videocopilot.com or sorry, dot .net, because Andrew Kramer, that genius over there, has an amazing tutorial on how to do day to night conversions in After Effects, and it talks about some other um, techniques, and basically the best thing to do is have a bunch of different techniques at your disposal. I don't always use the one I showed you here today. Sometimes I do it entirely in After Effects. Sometimes I use the tutorial that Andrew Kramer put up. So just scroll down. I think it's somewhere here near the bottom. It's been a while since I watched it, but I definitely highly recommend it, as well as every other tutorial here. This is an amazing resource if you're looking to get into After Effects. It's in there somewhere. I probably saw it there, but hey, there you go. Also, again, thanks for watching. It's Thanksgiving tomorrow, but please be sure if you enjoyed this video or any of the other videos we've shown you, please be sure to subscribe. We really appreciate it. And also, you can check out last week's video. It's called Locked and Loaded. It was pretty funny. If there's any requests for some of the other effects in that video, I can go in and do a tutorial on how to do that as well. So thanks for watching Hyperdrive Pictures. We really appreciate you watching and subscribing. And have an awesome Thanksgiving and have an awesome time using this or any other data night conversion techniques. Bye.